Hello there. Well, tonight's meal that I have to share with you, oh my gosh. If you like comfort food, but you don't wanna to go to a lot of trouble or have to clean up a lot of dishes when you're finished, this is the meal for you. Um, especially if you're cooking for two, we are going to do mini meatloafs. I have kind of prepared a little bit ahead of time just for the sake of filming. But what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna do one whole meal, our whole meal in one pan. And the pan has foil on it, so it's gonna be a really easy cleanup. So like I said, we're gonna do mini meatloafs, but this meatloaf is probably a little different maybe than something that you're used to or just your you know, original recipe meatloaf. Of course, with me, you know, I'm always having to do something different, uh, spice something up or change it. So uh, this is what I'm gonna do tonight. Normally, we eat our meatloaf a little bit different, but since I'm doing it in the little mini loaves, I wanted to uh, just change a few of the ingredients of what I, how I normally make my meatloaf. And I also found this wonderful barbecue sauce that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. Um, and so because of it, I kind of wanted to change the ingredients up a little bit. Before we get started though, I just wanted to let you know if you're watching that, thank you very much first of all for watching and also be sure to go to my website at www.cookitfor2.com. That's cookitfortwo.com. You can find my recipes there, my blog is there. While you're there, subscribe to my blog and you can print off the recipes, download them. Also, head on over to YouTube. Be sure and subscribe there and hit that bell and all that means is every time I put out a new video, you will get a notification saying that I did. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So, just to let you know all of that, let's get into this recipe. So, what I went ahead and did beforehand, because what our meal consists of is mini meatloafs, little um, baby potatoes, and uh, fingerlings, you know, whichever, whatever you can find, um, and some green beans, and that's it. But it is going to be delicious. So my oven has been preheated to 400 because I have already pre-baked these potatoes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your potatoes and you cut them in half. You're gonna put them on half of your foil, okay, on your pan, you put foil on your pan. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm kind of excited. Um, you put foil on your pan, okay, and then spray your foil really well with cooking spray because you do not want your potatoes and stuff to stick. The seasonings that I chose for tonight was salt and pepper, garlic, and then I did the um, everything bagel that's the Asiago cheese. I put a little bit of that on the potatoes. Put that in your oven, let that cook for about 20 minutes or so, depending on the size of your potatoes. Then you're gonna pull that out, and now this is where we're starting, okay? And the reason you do that is because it's gonna take your potatoes longer to cook than it will the meatloaf or the green beans. So you have to give your potatoes a little bit of a head start. All right, so what I have in my bowl here is I have about a pound, a pound and a half of hamburger meat. Remember I told you we get ours from a farmer here and so it's not exactly a pound. So what I'm going to add to this is I'm going to add one egg. Now this egg, you know, if you want to skip this part, you can, but it's just really to help uh, as a binding agent to help hold all of this together. Um, and so now I'm going to add, I have a fourth of a cup of really uh, finely diced and I'm going to show you this because I want you to see that this is pretty fine. You know, you want to chop them up little and then kind of go over them again with your knife. And um, because we are doing the mini meatloaves, you don't want like big chunks of onion. And I love onion, but we still don't want big chunks in there. All right, now I'm going to put, um, this is just some panko breadcrumbs. You can use whatever breadcrumbs you want. This is about, I think, a half a cup of breadcrumbs. So we're going to put those in there. Okay, I'm gonna do some garlic powder. I'm gonna sprinkle garlic powder in here. By all means, if you wanna do uh, fresh garlic, you could throw that in there. I'm just trying to make this really easy tonight. I'm gonna do some salt and pepper. Okay. 
And you can change these seasonings up. You can put whatever you would like to in your little meatloaves. Just remember, you want to keep it kind of simple because it's going to all need to get finished at the same time. Now, the last thing that I'm going to add in to my meatloaf is this um, candied jalapeno. You know, Kyle and I, we like it spicy. Um, and like I said, normally I don't do this for my meatloaf, but for this recipe, I wanted to try something different. So I had the candied jalapeno barbecue sauce. You can make your own barbecue sauce. You know what? You can go to the store and oh my gosh, it's like toothpaste and cereal. There's a million kinds of barbecue sauce. So whatever you like, that's what you should use. I have about a cup in this, but I'm only gonna put about half of it in there because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this and we are going to rub it on, you know, spread it on top of our meatloaf at, after it's cooked a little bit. But I like to put a little bit of that sauce in the, the hamburger meat because that helps keep it moist. And it's also just so good when you bite into it. Now, this may gross some people out because a lot of people are like, ah, don't touch it. I like to use my hands. My mom always said the very best tools you have in a kitchen are clean hands. So we're going for it. Here we go. That is how I'm going to mix this meatloaf up. But, like I said, you can use a wooden spoon, you can use one of those little rubber spatulas, you know, whatever makes you happy, however you like to do it. I'm sure you have your own way of doing it, and if you don't, and this makes you sick, well then just try a wooden spoon. Okay, I have the meat loaf all mixed up, and I wanted to show you a quick little trick here, because what we're going to do is, we're cooking for two, but we're making four mini meat loaves, okay? So we have the meat in our bowl like this, okay? So what you can do is to try to keep them kind of close to the same and not have like one huge one and three little ones is you just kind of look at your bowl and you eyeball it. You're gonna pick that halfway mark, okay? And you are going to just take you a line with your fingers right across, okay? Now you're gonna do the same thing up and down. You're gonna eyeball the middle, Take your finger, just do that. Now, you can see where there's four little meatloafs. So, we're gonna now just take that out, and that is gonna help to keep our meatloaf um, more, you know, proportioned with each other. Okay, what you wanna do is, you're just gonna kinda hand shape this into like a little loaf, however you wanna do it. That's what I'm doing. I'm just putting mine kind of trying to, you know, what it would look like if you had it in a loaf pan. So we're gonna put that. You don't wanna get them too thick, puffed up, but you don't want it to just be flat either. Okay, I'll push those back in a minute. If you're hearty eaters, then you might eat all these in one sitting. But if you're not, then you can eat two of them or three of them. If you have one left, then you have some lunch for the next day. You know, I don't know about y'all, but for me, there is not much better than a meatloaf sandwich with some Miracle Whip on it. Oh, with my sourdough bread. Oh my gosh, I should have made extra. <laughs> so we would be sure to have some left. All right, let's see. I'm going to kind of stagger those a little bit because we've got one more and we still have to fit our green beans on here. You can look on the pan and see, they're pretty close. They're not perfect, but um, huh, you know, it is my kitchen, so they're not perfect. All right, so we have our four meatloaf. Now, I'm going to wash my hands before I go any further, okay? Again, and I have my green beans in my bowl. 
We have the meatloaf all ready to go here. Fresh is really better, but I couldn't find any fresh. So what I did was I just got some frozen ones. And these are the, the they're called like really thin or very thin, I think is what they were called. Um, and they, because they'll cook a lot quicker and that way they're gonna be finished when all this is. So um, the, the frozen ones will be fine, but make sure you do thaw them out and make sure there's not any water on them before you know you go to cook them. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on them. And I'm keeping this really simple, okay? We have the Asiago cheese, everything bagel on our potatoes. We've got that jalapeno, spicy, sweet and sour barbecue sauce on our meatloaf. So my, uh, my potatoes, my green beans, I'm gonna keep kind of simple. I'm just putting some garlic powder on them and I'm gonna put salt and pepper and that's gonna be it. I'm gonna toss these up good, and then we're just gonna put these on our platter or our baking sheet wherever we can. They don't have to like all stay together. It's okay. Um, we're gonna mix that up a little bit, and I'll try to push these potatoes closer together because that's another reason why you wanna pre-cook them. You can kind of spread them out more and let them get a good even cook on them or bake. And then um, when you add everything else, they're gonna be a little bit crammed together. But it's all gonna be fine, because as this bakes, then it's going to shrink a little bit, and so will these green beans. All right, so I'm just gonna spread these green beans around. It's okay if you have a little bit in there with those potatoes, that's gonna be fine. That's what's so great about a one pan meal, all right? Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is I have the barbecue sauce and I'm gonna take it and I'm just going to just lightly coat the top with some barbecue sauce and then what I'm gonna do about, these are gonna cook probably about 25 minutes or so. So in about probably 15 minutes, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna coat them again with this delicious barbecue sauce. Let it just, this first layer, you know, kind of cook in a little bit, get it baked in, and um, then we'll add another layer of sauce. So I'm gonna put it in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. It all is gonna depend on this meatloaf. I just got this out of the oven. I did baste it another time with the barbecue sauce. I let it cook about 10 or 12 minutes, basted it again, and then I let it cook about another 15 minutes. Um, but again, all of these recipes will be on my website at www.cookitfor2.com. Um, but I did want to share a couple of things with you. What I've done here tonight with this meatloaf, you know, that's just something that we like. You can do this recipe any way you want. If you're not a barbecue sauce fan and you just want regular ketchup, however it is that you make your meatloaf, feel free to just do however you like on this recipe. You can swap the vegetables out. If you don't like green beans, you could do some roasted cauliflower, broccoli, even some carrots, um, and then the potatoes. This is very customizable for each and every person and your taste buds. And I did want to tell you too, I forgot to tell you when I was talking to you about the barbecue sauce. There's this really cool store um, that's not far from us, Ada's, and it's an Amish market. And, you know, I tell you a lot of times about there's not a whole lot of options around here, but that is really nice to have because just like that barbecue sauce, candied jalapeno barbecue sauce. And we've had the candied jalapenos before, and oh my goodness, they are so good. I was just wanting to give a shout out to Ada's because it's a really awesome store. They have all kinds of, I'm not even gonna try to tell you what all I have. You can look it up online, but um, that's where I got the, the barbecue sauce that I used tonight. Again, you can use whatever you would like. Um, but this is it, and you know how it is. <laughs> We're always hungry when the food is ready, so I'm gonna fix our plates and then we are gonna sit down and eat supper. But thank you so much for watching. And you know what? I hope that you picked up something that you didn't already know. And if this is not normally how you make your meatloaf, 
go for it. Try it out just one time. If you don't like it, you don't ever have to bake it again. And I would love it if you would share what kind of meatloaf do you like? How do you make your meatloaf? And yes, this meal is customizable to how whatever your tastes are. But another really great thing about this meal is that the cleanup is wonderful. This pan is it, okay? I mean, you know, I had the bowl that I mixed the meat in, but we're gonna fix our plates, you know, take all this off. This has foil on it, so I'm gonna take this foil up, throw it in the trash, and then just wash the pan off. So that is what is great about one pan meals. Lord bless you.